Let's assemble and test this Blue Scuzzy version 2. There it is in there. In this bag we have a few components that we need to solder onto that. This is for Richard's A590. It has to go back with that along with his 500 plus. The reason it wasn't in that video is because, well, this didn't arrive in time for that. But it's here now and I've been toying with the idea of putting together a quick sort of mini build video series. Because I do have various little projects like this. These would just be very quickly edited videos. Not that my usual content is edited to any significant level. But, as I say, it's something that I've been toying with doing. I've blabbered on long enough. Let's get this out of the bag. Let's get it assembled and tested. So as you can see, all the surface mounted stuff is already done. All we need to do is this little bit of through hole. The kit was bought from the Blue Scuzzy shop here in the UK. It costs £38 for this sort of self-build version of it. Or you can buy it fully assembled for £52. The 3D printed bracket on here. This is obviously the mount, the Blue Scuzzy. And Derek tells me this one should be suitable for most 3.5 inch drive enclosures. So hopefully it will work fine within the A590. He sells that bracket at an additional £3, or he does have various other ones for £4 or £5, all to suit different uh, computers. Went with the right angle bracket, just on the recommendation of Derek, and if you think about it anyway. With that in there, with that sitting inside the A590, the orientation of the bracket here would be the same as what it was on the old original drive. So we'll have to install that, we'll have to install the Raspberry Pi Pico, which is already flashed and set up with everything it needs to be. We need to mount the power connector, and then just a couple of jumpers. 3 pin 1 there. 2 pin 1 there for power. Or well, like a power switch that just has to be closed permanently. And then we can mount the other one there, so that you can attach an LED, although I suppose for the A590 that isn't really required since it has its own drive activity LED on it. But we'll just mount that for now anyway. I'm sure if Richard ever wants to use this in another computer scenario in the future, well, he's got somewhere to connect up his LEDs. I do need to remove the bracket. Let's do some soldering. So let's just start with those jumper pins since we've got them in the board. The easiest way I find to do this is just put a jumper block over them and then a little bit of blue tack just to hold it in position. I have my iron currently set to 347 degrees. What the temperature of it actually is I have no mm. idea. This was an Amazon special after all. And unfortunately I can't use my fume extractor because I broke the bloody thing. So repairing that will be another mini video. We'll do the power next. Blue tack on that might be a bad idea because once the heat travels up those legs it will melt this and just make a sticky mess. A little bit of captain tape instead. Scuzzy connector, do that next. It's big enough, it should just hold itself in position. Although we'll do opposite ends, or we'll do either end, and then I'll just melt that again and hold it and make sure that it's sitting right. Yeah, that's fine. And then it's just the Pico itself. On the self screen of the board here, USB that way, USB that way. And I think I will put just a little bit of blue tack on this just to make sure that it stays at a sensible sort of height off the board. But we will do opposite corners again this time. And I can remove the blue tack and we'll just be sure that we're happy with where it's sitting. Looks like it needs to go down slightly on that side. That looks a lot better now. And that's it. All built. 
There are a few other little positions there where other jumpers can be fitted, but I am assured they are not required. And equally, there's a position J1 or JP1 and JP2 there, but again, I am told those are not required. So I'll put this back on. And then we'll test it. I know this looks super sketchy, but it'll be fine. I've got an extra mat in here below the 500 plus just to raise it up slightly. The PCB levels, as you can see, are not flush with one another. This needs to sit slightly higher. And yes, the blue scuzzy is sort of balancing, hanging off the edge of this box here, but I don't want it dropping down onto the 590 and potentially shorting anything out. I don't think it would, but let's not take any chances. Does it work? Yep, certainly appears to. We have the drive access light down here for the A590 itself. It is flashing away. And indeed, drive light there is doing the same. One thing I want to try though is sysinfo. I want to see if this is any faster than it was previously using the V1. I don't think it would be, but let's just find out. So drives. D, H, 0 and speed. And it is, it is faster. I was not expecting that. Previously using the V1, it got a speed of 770 odd thousand bytes per second. And it's now over 1 million. Let's just try that again, just to make sure that wasn't a fluke. And no, that seems to be consistent. If anything, it actually seems to be slightly faster there. Let's try DH1. I don't expect that will be any different because you know it's all the same. And yeah, it remains 1,021,340 bytes per second. Would that make any noticeable difference compared to the V1, which was 777,000 odd? Yeah, probably not. But it is cool to see anyway that the V2 is that little bit faster. I do want to get myself one of these. I want to put one of these into my EATX2000 build because this thing isn't only a virtual SCSI hard drive, it also supports ISO files and can mount them as a virtual SCSI CD-ROM drive. And that itself is something I've been looking for for the Amiga 2000. Although I would have to get a SCSI card for that and I'm not even sure if the Amiga supports SCSI CD drives. Need to do my homework in that regard, but if anyone knows, maybe let me know down in the comments. Should we try and load something off the disk? Let's go for a bit of Turrican 2. It's accessing away here. And there it goes. Working fine. I cannot help but be impressed with this. Be it either the V1 or the V2, it is a fantastic bit of kit. But that's going to be it for this mini build video. That's really all I want to do with these mini videos. Just a quick build, quick test, and hopefully they all go as smoothly as this one has. So that's it. Let me know what you think of this concept down in the comments. And I'll see you next time.